start or should we wait another? Uh, no, I think let's, yeah, we can get started. Great. Um, so I know a few people said they would uh, be late, but um, um, but it's great to see all of you in uh, August. Uh, so, um, so this actually, I'm in Europe where things are supposed to be slow in the summer, but there's actually a lot to discuss uh, this month and uh, uh, a lot is happening. So this is a, uh, quite a, an exciting uh, call uh, that we're gonna have. And uh, uh, yeah, so I think as uh, as usual, uh, I'm uh, wait. I'm gonna share the outline uh, just for people who like to have a reference in the chat. Uh, but uh, if anybody is new or would like to uh, new to the call, new to radical exchange, uh, and would like to uh, introduce themselves, um, that would be uh, a good time. Uh, or in the chat, if you're you know, if I'm putting you on the spot, I apologize. Um, Hi, everybody. I'm a, I'm a newbie. Uh, my name is uh, Billy Bickett, and um, I've spent the last 20 or so years working at the intersection of technology and uh, civil society. And um, I've been following uh, your work, I guess, uh, just a few months, I think, on Twitter initially, and uh, I'm I'm interested in uh, well, well, one, I, I appreciate the the boldness and clarity of of what um, you're putting forth in the world, um, and so that was what drew me uh, to to your work, and um, I'd love to figure out how I can uh, make a contribution. Uh, so. Uh, my background is, uh, I mean, I studied history. Uh, I'm a former Marine, uh, I'm a, an adult with ADHD. Um, I worked at uh, social, I've worked on social enterprise projects for 20 years, usually on the business design and business uh, sustainability uh, side of things and building uh, networks and communities. Uh, so that's, that's me, uh, nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you, Billy. Very, uh, very impressive, and uh, thank you uh, for uh, for joining us uh, today. Um, yeah, we have a few people in the chat. Marshall, uh, uh, we got introduced to Rx Eva, the eighty thousand hours podcast. Very nice. Um, and yeah, um, anybody else who wants to say a word? All right, we have a few uh, a few in the chat uh, uh, already, so um, this is uh, quite uh, exciting. Um, Jen, uh, Matt, uh, Angela, or um, Christopher, anything you would like to add as an intro uh, to newbies? I like people who call it newbies, but they're all newbies. Like it's, we are all newbies every day. You know, we discover things every day. So, kind of what makes us come back uh, for to. Uh, uh, to that community, definitely. No, I would just say, uh, just say welcome. Uh, it's it's great to see great to see new faces, and um, we're always looking for opportunities to, uh, like, uh, get to know each other better and make connections within the radical exchange community. So, um, you know, feel free to to reach out to me at, at matt at radicalexchange.org. Um, set up a call. I would love to, to talk and, and get to know you better and, and help, um, uh, you know, help, help, help us help each other. So, um, yeah, looking forward to, to getting to know you all. And same here. Welcome. This is Jennifer and you can reach me at Jennifer at radical exchange.org, especially for those that are maybe more on the artistic creative side doing cultural projects, um, happy to talk. Thanks, Fanny. Yeah, Matt is not creative, so don't come help him for that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, great, we have Angela uh, as well uh, on the call. Uh, I wanted to 
mentioned some uh, great uh, update as well uh, that um, Angela is, uh, uh, we're actually swapping jobs. So it's like, you can just, uh, you know, you know us both, but now think of us as like the reverse. Um, I'm gonna be more involved in the uh, chapter life and uh, growth and uh, Angela will, uh, um, you know, increase and improve uh, our communication uh, and uh, uh, media production with Jen uh, overboard. Uh, so um, this is uh, exciting. Uh, Angela. Hi, everyone. Again, um, I'll obviously also be working with Fanny in terms of just uh, helping to you know, still grow the community. Uh, if anyone is interested also with just like helping out with Radical Exchange in general, uh, you can email us at volunteer at radicalexchange.org. And that's a good way to get your feet wet um, and, uh, you know, actually put some hours in. You can always use some help. So thank you. Awesome. Um, so without further ado, um, I, one thing that this call is, uh, is really about is, uh, is talking about what's happening uh, in the uh, white community uh, of uh, radical exchange. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot that uh, we all benefit from each other. And um, we um, do work with uh, a lot of uh, uh, projects in the community, like we can, you know, use this time to um, talk about some of these projects and seek some help. Or so if you have something you're uh, working on uh, or would like to share, um, this is definitely uh, an open um, call to, uh, uh, to do that. Uh, and to not put you on the spot a second time, uh, but uh, but get started. Um, we, um, I mean, I was very happy two weeks ago uh, to be in Paris for uh, a blockchain conference. So, like, don't don't close that call. It's not a blockchain uh, radical exchange. It's not a blockchain, um, um, you know, association or foundation. But um, but I was very happy to see at the blockchain conference uh, that they were. Um, this like small group of people uh, and that is growing lar larger every year of people who care about um, the bigger picture uh, and uh, public good projects and uh, more like social aspects and what can the blockchain do for good. Uh, and uh, Kevin, as usual, did an amazing presentation uh, and which was called, it's, this is all about Decentralization or consensus? I don't remember. See, you did not repeat it enough time. <laughs> but it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was uh, There were a lot of projects uh, uh, presented, uh, and uh, one of them was uh, actually called uh, Proof of Humanity. Uh, and uh, at Radical Exchange, we've been working on a lot of like digital identity uh, projects, uh, like. Uh, I mean, Matt, you can say more about that on uh, Bright ID and uh, and other project. I mean, this is quite uh, uh, coordination. Thank you. It's all about coordination. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> and um, um, but on the digital identity side, uh, so San Santiago Siri uh, and uh, Federico have been working on a uh, on a project with um, a team called Cleros, which is an arbitration uh, team on uh, developing a proof of uh, human humanity uh, and 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 doing a list of humans uh, on uh, online and um, and we have Paula uh, here uh, who is also working on the project among other things uh, many other things Paula is a, is a, uh, also a radical exchange fellow from the first uh, cohort. Um, and um, and I invited her to uh, to say a few words about proof of humanity and uh, uh, to just introduce the project and how it's actually linked to uh, UBI uh, as well. Um, if if you want to take off the floor, uh, Paula. Sure. Thank you, Fanny. Um, well, so. I guess I'll give a, a bit of uh, background on Proof of Humanity, which is, is one of the most interesting aspects to me. The idea, my, my involvement in, in this blockchain space came because I was uh, working on civic technology, trying to increase citizen participation on democratic processes. And 
I'm from Brazil. I was uh, trying to work with the administration of my city here. Uh, it's called Curitiba and had many difficulties in the civic tax space. I also felt like there wasn't much at the, at the time. Uh, this was around 2015, 16. Uh, there wasn't much of a focus on governance. It was uh, mostly about improving services, optimizing them, making the UX better. So that, all of this ended up leading me to, to the blockchain world. And I wanted to understand how, how could you build a decentralized uh, censorship resistant democracy. And I came, that, that was when I came into contact with this problem, which is called the SIBO attack, which is essentially just the, the problem of fake identities. Um, and and this, this term, SIBO attack, it, it, it's about this uh, question that every time that you have a network, this network can be, if you don't have a centralized entity authorizing people to come in or not, or requesting any type of information, then the network can be taken over by, by uh, anyone who is creating multiple IDs. So the idea was to try to create a decentralized way to combat uh, SIBO attacks or fake identities and proof of humanity essentially uh, does that by having people take videos of themselves. They make video selfies um, and they connect that to an Ethereum wallet. And then on top of that, uh, there's a web of trust. So people are vouching for each other and, uh, and with that, uh, we try to uh, see if, if it's possible to, to uh, prevent from people creating multiple fake identities. And then on top of this, there's also a, net, a policing, network policing. So there's a system of incentives in order to register, you need to give a deposit and then this deposit serves as a bounty for other members of the network to, to check if you are really a unique human or not. And if you're not, there are algorithms that are searching for you know, people who have similar faces, facial features. Um, and then if someone contests your identity, you're sent to a court. Uh, this is the Claros court and there are jurors. Kevin had a fascinating experience with that. Um, and, then, and, then, uh, and then if the court deems you to be a, a duplicate or a false identity, you lose your deposit and the person who uh, uh, accused you gets that that money and you know as uh, far-fetched as it sounds uh, somehow it's been working uh, there are 8,000 plus uh, members and the really cool thing about this is that it enables uh, even at this super limited scale it enables you to do decentralized uh, blockchain based votes so the cool thing uh, that we're doing right now we're about to about to launch this you're seeing it firsthand is that we're launching Polis on Proof of Humanity. So Polis is a tool that some of you might be familiar with. It basically, it's a tool where you can, there's a question and you can add statements in response to that question. And Polis groups the participants into opinion bubbles. And then it surfaces which are the statements and you, you can like uh, each other's statements and then Polis surfaces which are the statements that are liked by different opinion bubbles. So what are the consensus points? What, people, what are the things that people who disagree on many things can actually agree on? It's a really good tool for governance. So I'll just show you uh, how we've uh, integrated it with Proof of Humanity and we're about to, to launch that. Um, one second. Get it up. Okay. Let me share my screen with you. You see my screen? Okay. So basically this is uh, the site. If you, if any of you is on Proof of Humanity, I can share the link and you can participate on it firsthand. And then you click here to sign in with Proof of Humanity. You select your wallet, and this is going to connect you with your Ethereum address. It takes a moment. Sometimes too long. 
Okay, so now I'm signing it uh, with my Ethereum address, which means that I'm authorizing it, uh, this police page to connect with it. And then in a minute, you're going to see the police interface. And, you know, it's very simple. Uh, but yeah, here is the regular police interface. And then you can just agree, disagree, um, or pass the statements. And then it's just going to show you. Um, OK, my cookies are not enabled. <laughs> Um, but yes, it's just a demo. It's almost ready, but the idea is just it's it's to enable these types of uh, deep deliberations to happen in a DAO, which uh, so far uh, we didn't have any tools like that. So I think it's pretty cool. And I uh, just wanted to share that with you all since uh, Fanny invited me to come to talk about proof of humanity. I thought it would be uh, cool to share this uh, latest development. <laughs> And yeah, if you have any questions or if you want to get in touch, uh, you can reach out to me. I'm not formally involved with it in any way. I was one of the early conceptualizers of the idea, but there are many people who actually have come up with uh, the same idea. Vitalik Buterin at ECC, he shared that an article that he wrote in 2013, which basically describes proof of humanity. So, you know, no credits here, but um, yeah. Um, um, I'm, I've been involved with the team uh, for a long time, so happy to to answer any questions or uh, connect you with uh, whoever you you would like to. Yeah, if anybody has a question, I'm personally interested in knowing more about Kevin's experience uh, with it, or um, I don't know if it's a if it's a public story or. Uh... Um, so Kevin, Kevin is back. <laughs> I can. Get started, Kevin. Are you there? Hey, yeah, okay. happy to speak to that. Um, yeah, so I basically submitted to the registry. I think when Proof of Humanity was only 100, it was like a few hundred people at that time. Um, and I didn't closely follow the instructions. And I submitted a, uh, a picture where my head was looking, it was just my headshot. Like I had like a, I was like 30 degrees looking off camera. Um, and then someone, a, uh, someone, basically like appealed my inclusion in the registry, which uh, we went through two or three levels of appeal and I won the first two and I had to keep on like adding more ETH to my stake. Um, and eventually someone was well organized enough that they were able to defeat my entrance into the registry. And it was just kind of a funny case because Santi, who's the founder of Proof of Humanity had used his vouches on me uh because like santi and i know each other and um and so santi's vouchers were stuck for about a month as we were going through the appeals process um in the end i decided it wasn't worth worth fighting and i just ended up submitting my registry or submitting my proof of humanity on a different account after i failed that one so uh it was a fun little experiment in decentralized governance and i learned a lot about claros and appeals during that time so uh yeah i, I don't know it was just kind of like somewhat of a high pro profile thing on Twitter, but I'm, I'm not sure that it really is like that important of a governance thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Paula might have another perspective. Um, no, what I thought was really funny, but also just interesting. I mean, obviously this is, we're glad that we're not deciding on like serious questions, but I think that these small situations can help us start to see what is a decentralized blockchain based court in action. And I thought it was really cool that one of the jurors went on the streets and showed Kevin's picture to people and asked people in the street and, and recorded the whole thing, uh, asking, do you think this is a front facing picture? And, uh, and he got the responses and that, that was how he made his case uh, against Kevin. Of course, uh, I mean, there's tons of room for debate, but I, I, it was just an interesting thing to see in, in action uh, at a distributed court. So conclusion, follow the guidelines <laughs> and you'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, this is a definitely, you know, constant uh, uh, upgrade and, and, and new things you figure out along the way. Uh, so thanks a lot for, uh, uh, for uh, letting, telling us about, about this. Sure. Um, ha happy to be the guinea pig. <laughs> 
Um, I actually in the for people who joined late in the uh, in the agenda slash notes, I added like the talks uh, that Paula or Kevin or I mentioned um, also um, to what I was saying. Like Vitalik's uh, talk at ECC was called "Things That Matter Outside of DeFi." Um, that was really you know truly like relevant to like other things um, like that blockchain is not just about um, that but enough about blockchain um, I um, was wondering if anybody else had any other uh, projects or uh, updates that they uh, would like to share or ask um, anything to uh, um, to the call so Real quick, I really love the uh, radical exchange voice um, <clears throat> that you guys ran. And so for, I was running a fellowship for effective altruism and I took sort of use polis to put some of the things there. And then just in a manually sort of Google sheet did some quadratic voting and it worked really, really well. And everybody seemed reasonably happy with it, which is good because next week we're talking about institutional decision-making, which includes in the sort of uh, outline for effective altruism includes quadratic voting and other things. So they've had a taste of it. And I think I heard somebody say 80,000 hours. So there's certainly some uh, interaction there between you guys and the effective altruism community, which is which is fantastic. That's awesome to hear. I'm glad that it I'm glad that it worked. And um, yeah, we're we're hard at work on continuing to develop and extend that that tool. And, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll soon, uh, you know, have it, uh, you know, ready to go in a polished public facing way so that you won't need to cobble together spreadsheets and stuff and you can just run smooth uh, smooth voice processes uh, um, uh, in, in the web app and integrate it into into you know put the decisions on chain and all kinds of other cool integrations so um, yeah that's awesome to hear though I'm glad it went well Yeah, I must say I've been using uh, this like quadratic vote dot radical exchange dot org uh, quite a lot, like to set up like any sort of decisions um, that you know you can set up a vote. Like it was originally actually um, uh, like forked from a, a tool, a quadratic voting tool that um, Gitcoin uh, put together. And uh, and um, like Matt, you can talk to the changes that you that you and Alex uh, made, uh, but, uh, but this is quite useful for any sort of decision. Like we used it for uh, a few um, uh, hackathon um, um, decisions uh, and voting. I think it would be really cool to see okay, in the same way great. that you have. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Today going to be oh i think someone is hearing vitalik on the video or something but um i was just going to say that it would be cool to see uh that quadratic voting to also be integrated with ethereum wallet so more DAOs could start to use that yeah totally and um uh and Alex, it actually is really. Uh, I'm I'm also really interested in thinking about how uh, radical exchange voice could integrate with um, effective altruism. I, I think there's a there's a really natural um, um, synergy there in terms of uh, structuring structuring decisions. So, uh, yeah, would love to love to be in touch. It'd be great to chat with you about that. Great. Any, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, so yeah, here in Brazil, I'm also from Brazil and, uh, like we have a lot of projects that are like starting now. So one of them is a, uh, a budget visualization website that I'm uh, creating that, that is based on, a, on, a, one of the projects from the Gov zero uh, initiative from Taiwan. So um, yeah, well, we're, um, I'm creating this website for Sao Paulo, my city, and uh, I need some help with it. Uh, if anyone knows uh, how to code with uh, Vue JavaScript um, um, in, uh, we're also, uh, uh, 
Um, Vinicius, do you want to talk about that uh, project with FICA? Uh, it's, a, it's an organization here in Sao Paulo as well that wants to implement um, salsa or cost. Um, and uh, we, we wanted to like find some, um, you know, properties here in, in Sao Paulo that we could start uh, doing this experiment. So uh, yeah, we're, we're also uh, working on this and trying to find contacts that could provide us with some kind of uh, property that we could start experimenting with uh, uh, cost and salsa. Uh, and there's also some, um, like we're starting to do some applications of uh, that quadratic vote in um, some city uh, councils, um, but we're there. Like we're not using RxC Voice, and I think that's something that, uh, like, because our, RxC Voice is a much more complete tool than quadratic vote than that that website. So this is also something that like we're trying to do that, to adapt this website to adapt rxc voice um so it could be used for these um uh, elections instead of that quadratic vote website uh, and these are the three main projects that are like i'm involved right now uh here in brazil so yeah if anyone has any interest on helping us uh it would be great Actually, yeah. Thank you, uh, Gustavo. Like that's uh, that's something uh, maybe uh, Jen that you might want to mention on the um, uh, community page on the Radical Exchange website. We uh, we actually uh, added like a page where you can post like needs like that, like finding like um, like developers or you know any uh, anybody um, um, you know that that might be uh, useful if you have a description. You can. Um, send it to us and we'll publish it, definitely. Okay, great. I'll do that. And I'm, I'm sure we've got uh, great view developers in the community. We should, um, we should figure out how to, how to send out the message to them and, and, and connect you, whether it's through, through Twitter or something else. Great, Amazing thanks. project. We would love to hear a little bit more about the, uh, the, the FICA project. Um, um like what what's what's the sort of uh plans and and if you could sort of you know let let the group know a little bit about what the idea is there mm -hmm. so um fica is an organization here in brazil that wants to provide affordable housing like their goal is to provide affordable housing in uh especially in the center of the of cities so they have um a few apartments already uh, that they um, rent for, you know, very low income families. Um, and um, all of the, the budget for this project comes from donations. Uh, it's uh, like the, the whole project is run by teachers of a, of a uh, architecture university here in Sao Paulo. And the, the, the organizer of FICA, he wanted to like, explore a little bit more of these uh, concepts of salsa. So, uh, but he, he, like, his idea was to, start using these mechanism with um, you know commercial properties instead of um, you know households so um, so it's it's we're, we're still in the very start of this project we we don't have a lot of progress we were just um, thinking about you know how um, 
like what we want to achieve. Uh, the thing is, we want to experiment. This is a, this is an experiment. So uh, we're still like looking for the the best places and and like uh, who could provide us with with some um, you know property to experiment with. Um, so yeah, that's sort of where we're at now. Uh, we're still like doing the research part of this project. Very cool. Yeah, Fika is uh, an incredible organization. So I'm really excited about this. Jen, you mentioned the Y Foundation? Yeah, just that um, they have some, they are a part of the Untitled Alliance, which might just be so if you want to be connected they they might just have um ideas about how to who to approach and how to approach people that might like maybe state actors or people um who might have property that they'd be willing to donate so that might be a person to put you in contact with the founder of that so i'll make a note to do that. Gustavo, do we have, I think we have your email address from registering for this possibly or in MailChimp, I'm sure. Yeah, I think so, but I can send it to you in, on the chat right now. Okay, thanks. Great, awesome. Um, I think we lost uh, Vinicius. I don't know, Vinicius is, uh, is here um, as well. Um, I don't know if, you were done, Gustavo, or didn't want to cut you in the... Oh, I'm, I'm done. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> no, thank you for all the update. Um, and uh, yeah, um, very, uh, very nice. Hi, Nicoline. <laughs> um, and, um, and yeah, so I, I, any other uh, project or uh, updates or ask uh, that anybody would want to share before we um, move on to the chapter? updates um, i don't know i'm sorry i just joined <laughs> we had like a crazy no, no, no. Storm, storm here <laughs> oh really so the internet sorry. was out for a little bit yeah i know it's crazy it's in the middle of summer but it's super super cold now <laughs> it's insane <laughs> but uh, i'm sorry to have missed yeah. all your updates um, no 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 no. this is fine i mean um uh we um actually so um uh nicoline has, uh, has been working on a on a great project uh as well on the on the infamous nfts uh but like a quite an amazing uh uh way to actually connect uh creators to um 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 charities and good uh, good projects so uh yeah it's perfect timing actually nicoline if you uh, if you want to mention what you guys are doing with okay good <laughs> yeah what you said like the infamous nfts <laughs> we are actually uh, a couple of weeks away from launch we've been that's why i've been completely undercover this last month uh, so we are like six co-founders now and the project is uh, really growing um, and yeah, for the infamous NFTs, we are using them actually to create connections between artists, creators, and social organizations. I mean, to uh, communities that really want to make an impact in the world and connect them together. And of course, the one's going to stream money to the other one. So they are connected in an economic way as well, obviously. But uh, we also have a social layer on the platform. Um, I don't. I do have like some slides, but I don't know if that's too boring. <laughs> I can explain a little bit, and uh, I prefer to answer your questions instead of uh, doing like a presentation. Um, in any case, like in a few days, our light paper is gonna come out, so I can send it to you, and you can read it like uh, relaxed uh, with everything uh, that is there. Um, but yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's a marketplace like any marketplace you would think of. But the thing is that we are not. Um, the only like curators of NFTs. Uh, we open up to different communities. So um, because we are not, I mean, who are we to say what is good art and what is not good art? So it will be like a metaverse of uh, communities, basically. So as a community, you can open up your gallery or maybe your brand or in any case, you have your own audience and you have your own way to curate. So you have your own way to govern 
uh, that community inside uh, the platform. Um, so it will be a community of communities uh, and that is, makes me very exciting because in that way it can really grow up and, and scale and we will see different ways of how people govern their galleries and how they deal with the social organizations and connecting them with the creators and um, yeah, in that sense it can completely scale up. Um, of course, it's going to be a DAO, it's going to be a token, it's going to be everything that you would expect from a project like this. Um, but yeah, the, the unique thing is that it's not just about the environment, it's not just about climate change. We really make sure that the impact goes across the SDGs. So we use the Sustainable Development Goals as a guideline to make sure the impact is diversified over uh, all of these SDGs. So we are really onboarding a lot of organizations now, which is quite a challenge because there's a lot of social organizations that, uh, I mean, first, they don't know so much about what is crypto. <laughs> Second, they, there is a big barrier. So we are really, really uh, developing a lot of educational material, especially for this target group, um, which is interesting because uh, people are very keen to know and very keen to help. Uh, you're breaking up a little bit. Material oh. and as the run is actually what brings it super super nice. Great, you're breaking up a little bit, Nicoline, but um, probably the storm. Uh, still, um, but uh, if you have <laughs> no, but we we got you uh, well, mostly. And uh, if you have, uh, I put the the website. But if you have any more details, and I will definitely follow through for uh, for the. Uh, light paper uh, in a in a few days and and relate that um, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I can put a link to the pitch deck that we have as well, and you can just uh, browse through it by yourself without yeah, me yeah, talking yeah. over it. Uh, yeah. That is usually a better. <laughs> um, and then the light paper comes out. So, and soon the product comes out. At least uh, the MVP. So that will be uh, exciting. We'll definitely let you know how that goes. Um, and we're still. Uh, I mean, the token economics um, structure and the governance model, we are still designing it as we speak. And the good news is we have shitloads of amazing advisors in the space, so we are in good uh, company in that one. Yeah. But if you have some advice, because of course we want to include a lot of uh, different voting mechanisms, also to offer them maybe as standards for the different communities. Um, and that's where uh, we'll probably reach out to you in the next couple of weeks <laughs> with some uh, advice or what some feedback on what we we're thinking about awesome uh well thanks uh thanks a lot um for for that and um i believe there was a uh, brenton did you um also have any uh, uh something to share yeah i just wanted to share something brief uh thanks for having me i'm, I'm new around here but um uh, my hometown is actually denver colorado and i was doing some uh, research on the implementation of quadratic voting a couple of years ago uh, in the state legislature. And I know right now we're sort of working on, uh, I'm kind of working on this like retrospective with the local government on if it can be implemented uh, like through the Denver City Council and sort of local initiatives here. It's like very early stage conversation, but I think that uh, the effects of it were, were positive uh, in terms of how the state of Colorado looked at it. And I'm just curious about like, um, if we can sort of move past the quagmire of bureaucracy, but uh, not really building anything new, but I thought I would share that at least the conversations around it are still happening here in Colorado, so. That's awesome, Brenton. I would love to, uh, I would love to connect and um, make sure that you're uh, introduced to like everyone who's involved with the, the various different QV projects that we've, uh, we've done over the past couple of years in, in Colorado. Uh, would love to, um, you know, Make sure all of the all of the connections are getting made in this in this space, and um, and talk about bringing it to the uh, uh, to the city council of Denver. That'd be amazing. Great. Um, thanks. Uh, anybody else before uh, we spend uh, probably ten minutes on the on chapter um, like radical exchange chapters. 
All right, anything else you can uh, you can put in the chat and uh, that's uh, totally uh, fine. Um, so on, on um, chapters, uh, so uh, for reminder for um, newcomers, um, the way radical exchange is, uh, is set up is that um, the chapters are really the heart of the uh, movement uh, and where really things uh, happen. Uh, thanks to our amazing uh, chapter leads and uh, and then the foundation really uh, acts as like a small entity in support uh, of uh, the chapters and um, so this is chapter summer camp <laughs> for lack of a better word uh, we wanted to do <clears throat> sort of a soft uh, relaunch and uh, uh, we're quite excited uh, to see more uh, in-person uh, meetings happening now there's um, uh, in a lot of different places like Delta variants uh, happening. So that might not be a full like relaunch in person, but, uh, but still a good time to uh, reconnect, uh, mention a few things and, uh, and put that on your radar if you haven't yet uh, joined a, a chapter because um, you know this call is once a month, but uh, with um, local chapters like this is much more uh, focused on like specific um, topics and uh, and uh, much more active uh, in a way. Uh, so uh, one thing I wanted to mention was that uh, there is a new Discord that like we are uh, launching. So it is still pretty slow and pretty like you know like we'll make it more active uh, as we go. But uh, really a way to connect. Uh, uh, you know, outside of the calls, um, and uh, and new ways to onboard new people and and connect you to uh, people who uh, express interest in local chapters. Uh, and uh, for today, I also wanted to. Uh, well, I had the great pleasure to uh, uh, meet uh, the French uh, chapter uh, two weeks ago uh, in Paris, led by uh, my who uh, nicely accepted to be uh, on the call. Uh, and as usual, was blown away by um, you know discussions and the um, different projects uh, that they have. And uh, um, and my, I uh, don't know if you want to give us uh, a few updates or things you're working on. I mean, there's so many things. Like so, uh, but um, but this is uh, quite a, an inspiration and uh, and also a great example for. Um, people who might want to start a chapter uh, somewhere or, or join one. Hello, yeah, thank you, Fanny. Um, yeah, actually, it was really good to have our um, second in uh, uh, for real meeting, <laughs> uh, and Fanny was, was here. Um, so here we, we, we just figured out that we had a, a topic that was very important for most of the member of the chapter that was governance. So we want to launch a lab. Uh, we are looking for case studies, um, partners like academics and, and others, um, just to work on a set of tools that can be used by uh, quasi unions in France. Um, and so, we would like to use different uh, platforms. So we have been talking with um, Matt and Alex, uh, maybe to see what were the perspective of Eric's voice. There is also one uh, uh, actor here that has a platform um, for um, the participation of citizens. And so we will try to just understand what can be um, the onboarding of different organizations that are quasi unions. Some of them are more like NGOs, others are more like unions. And what we want to understand is like how those organizations that have uh, the SDG um, as goals for their organization for their development can leverage those protocols or technologies um, to just increase impact. And this is a big topic in France because we often feel like uh, there are a lot of limitations from maybe uh, the fact that we are registered as a non-profit or as this kind of uh, legal statute. And, and so we really think that we should be able to offer a new dimension for 
leaders of different movements and organization. So, so yeah, we are still working on that, um, but we, we see that we have good perspective on that. And I think also that we really want to uh, launch again um, our speaks um, because we had different talks uh, last year. Uh, it was really cool. And now we, will, we would like to, to see if we can do it uh, also um, maybe on a regular time again. Um, and um, yes, I think, I think that is, we just need a little bit of organization. <laughs> so we are, we are using a Discord also. This is like as a big test. Uh, it, it, it seems that it's working because Slack was not, uh, was not very used before, but Discord is working, I think, for the French chapter. So we are still learning and seeing how it's evolving. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, uh, uh, Mai. I um, uh, like one thing that we really uh, talked about was really the idea of uh, dashboards. That was the whole thing. We're like, we, like Matt and you know, Mai, you talked about the dashboard, and we're like, what is a dashboard? And it's really the idea of uh, Lego blocks that, like, based on the uh, needs of uh, of certain communities or or unions or groups uh, that you can really you know, pick and choose like uh, among the great tools like that we have available. And, you know, we talked about police already. We talked about like other, uh, I mean, there's so many like like that that like can be really uh, mixed together to um, to solve needs um, for many communities. And uh, and onboarding, I'm sure with Nicoline, there, <laughs> there's a lot of overlap, you know, between the, I mean, the onboarding of of uh, you know communities and uh, i mean it's not you know all the blockchain on your side my but um definitely a lot to learn as well on how to um get more people to um uh, to get on board so uh one last thing i wanted to mention is that uh like something i said that was great in the way uh, you and Nicolas were uh, doing things in the French chapter was um, that, you know, Tuesday night was like the radical exchange night and, and kind of like trying to stick to, uh, to that. And, and, and yeah, it's, it, it was, uh, it was very um, um, inspiring, uh, I would say. Um, so thank you. Uh, and uh, Matt, I know you had like during the um, uh, a few like virtual meetups uh, in uh, um, San Francisco. Um, do you, you want to mention anything or? Uh, we did a couple meetups uh, um, like six or eight weeks ago. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah, I mean, one, one of these was with the um, uh, Buckminster Fuller Institute, um, and which I'm trying to get the video of it. There, there, we had some, some nice talks there, but um, I haven't been able to extract the video from their, uh, from, from their platform. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, I mean, we're, we're sort of, um, we still haven't done an in-person meetup in San Francisco yet, but we're, um, where hopefully that'll happen soon. Awesome. Um, anybody else uh, in, in the call who uh, is uh, in a chapter or um, has anything upcoming or need help or on anything? Well, I wanted to thank you for all your help that to put subjects in the chat. Uh, we are going to start to do the first meetups again in Akasha Hub, like in person. It's still a bit uh, quiet because uh, people are still scared. Um, and also the Giveth House, where most of our speakers are residenting, they are in quarantine at the moment, so <laughs> we need to wait a little bit. But, um, but yeah, the, the will is there to, to start to do this again. And we don't do it like a weekly, uh, we do it usually like monthly like the first uh, Thursday of the month. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is a very good idea to have it like on a steady day and make that the radical exchange day. Um, but we're starting it up slowly. So I'm just warming up uh, the pieces here. As you see, I've been quite busy as well. So no, no, and this <laughs> is great. I need to delegate a bit this one. <laughs> 
and uh, but this is like really like one chapter is not like doesn't resemble another i mean they're all very different in the subjects in the timing in the schedule like everything so um so this is i think like what makes them truly special is that like there's no like one template and you know like and then everybody follows the template so um so this is uh uh, also why it's great to like share different ideas because then uh, it's um, uh, really sparks ideas um, as well uh, for us as well. So um, so it's great to hear uh, Nicolene and I hope they, they'll be okay in quarantine. <laughs> yeah, time passes and then after it's okay, don't worry. Very nice. Is it a good, is it a good moment for me to say a few words about the um about the open letter on data? Yes, you were actually next. So this is perfect. Cool. So um, we're, as, uh, as most of you know, um, Radical Exchange Foundation has for some time now been, um, been uh, um, really, really deep in some important policy conversations and, um, you know, work with, with Technologists and 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 uh, policymakers and others about sort of the, the future of collective control over data and you know what the like next generation of um, information infrastructure is going to look like um, and you know we've we've been advocating for a uh, essentially systems of more democratic more collective decision making um, with respect to do to data flows, you know, how information is like flowing through the through the economy. And um, uh, it's what we've done uh, recently is put together like an open letter, uh, which attempts to sort of summarize what we view as an emerging consensus about collective control over data, you know, and, and outlines the basic idea of sort of Moving beyond uh, an individualistic framing for you know how we think about decision making and control over data, and towards a more like democratic group decision framing of um, of that of that question, um, and uh, we've gotten you know, we we already have like a a, a really really solid group of high profile uh, technologists, academics, data scientists, policymakers who have. Uh, put their name on this thing, sort of, you know, just on, through informal channels, um, and hopefully, you know, if 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 all goes as planned uh, today, we're going to take this this letter and uh, blast it out over over Twitter to try to get a much larger group of people to um, to to sign their name to it. Basically, basically, just kind of signaling a. A thin consensus about the general direction in which data policy should um, sh should move. So this is not, you know, I'll, I'll post a link to the letter and you'll see it's not it's not super specific, but it is a kind of a, um, a, a a clear signal that we need to move more towards uh, collective methods of uh, decision making about data and away from highly individualistic methods of decision making about data, um, and. Uh, so basic, so I, I'm, I mentioned this because would love to, uh, to get uh, signatures from, from this group of, of anybody who you know, would like to, like to kind of put their name on this and, and help, send a, help send a message to the public and to the policy world uh, about the direction that this space should, should move in. Um, our, our hope with this is that if we, if we continue to you know, to build a, a, a large and, and uh, uh, powerful, um, you know, uh, group of people who's willing to kind of say that this is the direction we should move in. Uh, this letter will lead to media coverage to, you know, to, to journalists and, and other kinds of opinion makers doing a deeper treatment of, of this question and helping to move the public conversation around uh around data um in, into into a productive direction um which will eventually you know um, also you know impact the 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 incentives that policymakers are feeling and um uh and uh you know from there lay the 
set the table for the next generation of information infrastructure to be, you know, to to work a lot better, to be a lot more uh, a lot more efficient, and to sort of capture the positive externalities and reduce negative externalities, and um, and uh, um, and and generally distribute power. So um, so that's um, that's the idea here. Let's uh, let's put. Uh, I will put the um, uh, link to the to the Google form where you can read this letter and uh, and put your name on it if you'd like to. Um, and otherwise, keep uh, keep an eye out for this, and you, you you should see it in more public channels soon. Thanks. Uh, definitely, uh, relay. Uh relay that um we're actually almost uh, i mean we're on like one minute to the hour um so just wanted to um ask if anybody had something quick to say or any closing statement uh or any other comment jen angela or christopher Well, uh, if uh, if not, I think uh, I mean you know like Angela mentioned like um, if uh, if you if you'd like to um, help on anything uh, you know we're always looking for more people to get involved. Uh, uh, but if you also uh, would like to uh, join uh, or um, you know get a chapter going, you can reach out to me at Penny at radicalexchange.org. Um, and this is really where cool things happen. Um, and uh, one had a question on the, on the, will there be another fellowship? Um, yes, but Matt, uh, Jen, probably no details yet. Yeah, no, no details yet. The, um, the, our tentative plan is, is to have another fellowship program um, in the same time frame as last year's. So, you know, opening, opening applications for it in, um, uh, in the fall and running the program in early 22. Um, but I, but I, I should mention that there's a, there's a possibility that we will um, actually get a grant to sort of expand the fellowship program quite significantly. And, um, uh, and if that happens, then the time frame may get a little bit scrambled, but so, so we're kind of, kind of waiting to see, um, to see how that goes. Um, but if we don't get a grant, uh, that grant, then we'll, we'll run a fellowship program similar to what we did last time and the uh, applications should be open in the next uh, couple of months. Great. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, this was uh, uh, a lot of dates, and uh, uh, and uh, it's uh, um, we'll definitely be in touch uh, between the two calls. And uh, uh, but thank you very much. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Everyone. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.